All right, as we've been predicting, the Fed is going to raise rates. They came out and talked about that today. Uh, how's that going to affect you? How can you benefit from that? Because remember, this channel is all about examining what's going on in the economy, not complaining about it, but figuring out how we can profit from it. Uh, examining what's going on in the economy, politics, policy, and seeing how we can benefit from it. I'm a former lobbyist. I've got a ton of experience in uh, regulatory affairs, and I was even an elected official, believe it or not. So I know how these issues uh, intersect with your personal economy. And I know, because I've seen it done a thousand times, wealthy individuals and organizations win economically, no matter what happens. They just know how to play both sides, uh, both eventualities uh, in terms of policy decisions that come out. Now, before we get started, I have a feeling, because we've recently revamped this channel, I've got a feeling that YouTube, we're not going to be one of YouTube's favorite channels. Uh, so I anticipate not a lot of promotion uh, from YouTube. I don't know. I would love it if they did. But we're getting into some controversial topics here. And also, we are uh, you know, kind of speaking truth to power. We're just going to be completely honest. And I think the same thing that I brought to local radio here in Maryland that actually got me uh, and a good friend of mine kicked off of local radio, me and two good friends of mine. We told the truth, okay? So I got a feeling we're not too popular with the establishment when we talk about these particular subjects. So like the video, share the video, subscribe, uh, help us out there. Now, consumer prices, the CPI, Consumer Price Index, is up 6.6% annually. Producer prices surged 6.6%. Most on record. Now, they just started tracking this uh, in 2010. So, uh, it only goes back, uh, you know, about a decade. But, still, it's uh, a hefty increase. Producer prices rose in May by the most on record as the reopening of the U.S. economy from the uh, 2020 events gathered momentum. The producer price index for final demand last month increased at a 6.6% annual rate. You've seen it. You're out there. Uh, you're purchasing goods and services. You've known this. Janet Yellen and Jerome Powell have been out there lying, saying, oh, no, we don't see any uh, inflation on the horizon, this, that, and the other. We did a video about that. And uh, they just finished saying that months ago, and here we are. Real world prices are up. Now, of course, if you live in the rarefied financial air that they live in, you know, this is all academic, but this is real to us. We need to know how to navigate these types of situations because uh, we need to know how to profit from them. So let me switch gears. You know that the consumer price index is up. Uh, what is going to happen as a result of that? Well, the Fed had a meeting this afternoon, and they're going to, uh, they've signaled that they're going to raise interest rates by the end of 2023. Now, the market's already reacting to that. They're down uh, today. It's fine. Uh, Federal Reserve officials signaled they expect to raise interest rates by late 2023, sooner than they anticipated in March. As the economy recovers, recovers rapidly from the effects of the pandemic and inflation heats up. So now, now, now it's okay to admit for some reason that inflation is here. They're still giving you some time to, you know, understand what's going on, give the market some time to kind of be weaned off of this uh, easy money policy that they've had for uh, the last few years. The median projections show they anticipate lifting their benchmark rate. The discount rate is what the Fed controls. They're going to raise that or project that they will raise that by 0.6% from near zero by the end of 2023. Now, how can you play this to win? All right, first of all, it's going to make money more, a little bit more expensive to borrow, okay? Now, we're down around zero right now. It's not going to, stock market will, will do a short-term panic as if they're going to raise the rate to 10%. They're not. 0.63% uh, will mean that you will get, uh, you'll see the banks able to raise their rates on money that they loan. So, if they're able to do that, they become more profitable because they'll include a spread in there. So banks should benefit from this. Any institution that is able to lend money 
uh, will have a eventual positive reaction to an interest rate hike. Okay. The other thing uh, that you want to keep in mind here is when it comes to inflation proofing your situation, there are a couple of things you can do. Uh, there are a couple of items that uh, assets rather that will benefit uh, in a higher inflationary environment. They, they won't uh, suffer as much as some. Number one is real estate. Real estate uh, tends to hold its value. So it uh, tends to be a great hedge against inflation. Real estate has a lot of uses uh, where you can derive some uh, appreciation and or income from. So there's that. Uh, and if you if you're like, hey, look, I don't have thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars to go out there and put on a property, or I don't want to become a renter, I don't want to do rehab. Those are viable options. However, if you're not into that, then REITs or real estate investment trust could be a viable method to get into the real estate sector and take advantage of the uh, inflation hedge that real estate typically serves as. Now, with everything, we always tell you, you gotta do your own due diligence, okay? I don't know your situation, uh, your specific situation. You have to do your due diligence, research these things, talk with your tax planner, your CPA, your attorneys, or whoever it is that advises you, and get uh, you know primed for your particular situation. Another thing you can do, and of course, you know I'm a big advocate for this. If you own a business, Remember, business returns, and of course, this is going to, what type of business you're in is, is definitely going to play a large role in this, but typically, a business that you own is, uh, if it's properly managed, it's going to return, uh, the, it's going to have the highest returns out of any asset class. So you're looking at between, uh, according to the SBA, between 15 and 30% returns. If it's properly managed, if it's in an industry that, you know, has fairly decent margins, things like that. So that's another thing. If you own a business, then go about the process of making that business more efficient. Uh, if you are interested in starting a business, check our uh, check the description of this video. There's some information on how you may qualify to be in the financial services business if that interests you. Uh, so those are some thoughts on inflation and how we can benefit from it. The banks, they're going to benefit. Uh, real estate typically holds its value in an inflationary environment. And again, let me tell you something about real estate that's very important. Real estate is a hyper-local market. So if you hear about uh, some fantastic appreciation of real estate in Las Vegas and you live in Boise, Idaho, then you got to understand the same types of uh, returns may not be realized by you because it might, it's probably more likely a whole different set of circumstances. Real estate is hyper local. It is not a national, it's not a state, it's not even a local, a, a municipality or a local market. It's hyper local, meaning that it's in many cases block by block in terms of the value, style of the home, location, all that stuff. So that's how you can win this um, this uh, inflationary environment that we've moved into. Fed's going to raise rates. Who didn't see that coming? That's really all they can do. Rates are near zero right now. They were going to go up at some point. And even when he does that, we're still going to be around historic lows. So money will still be very cheap to uh, borrow. And that means that you can go out and uh, put money to work leverage it to build your business or do the things that you uh, want to do in order to become more financially uh, independent. And that is what we're all about, financial independence. This world is changing quick, fast, in a hurry. And if you are not prepared, then as, as I've said before, you're going to be looking at universal basic incomes, Medicaid, all those things that just allow subsistence living. Believe me, we're going to do a video very soon here on um, some of the things that robotics and artificial intelligence are uh, supplanting in the labor market. So there is, for example, a Walmart in Canada. I'll link to it. Uh, there's Walmart in Canada. 
that's going to uh, just do automated checkout here on out. And if you don't believe that that Walmart is a test bed to roll this technology out and get rid of uh, human being employees in Walmarts across their footprint, then I've got a bridge to sell you. Okay. And also, don't believe this can't happen to white collar employees because it's coming to that sector as well. You got to be smart. You got to be savvy. And you really should be thinking about opening your own business if you're entrepreneurial. If you're not. That's fine. But uh, you do. Either way, you need to know what's going on. All right. So uh, share, like, subscribe. I'll talk to you soon.